Hello, Mr. Maes is here. Welcome back to school. If you're just coming back to school, this is a calculus video for my AP Calculus BC class. This is lesson 1-2A. I didn't put it up there. 1-2A, this is algebraic techniques for limits. So what we're looking at is what happens if we have a limit uh, where if we plug in zero, we get something called an indeterminate form. So if I plugged in zero, I get 0 over 0. Now 0 over 0 is called indeterminate. We've got a few indeterminate forms. 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity are the ones that we're going to see the most often. There are others which we'll talk about later, all the indeterminate forms that we're going to need to deal with. For right now, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity are the ones we're looking at. So what do we do if we have 0 over 0? Well, tactic number one, go for algebraic techniques. So what that means is try to simplify whatever you have there. Notice here I can simplify by dropping out the x's and so I'm going to end up really taking the limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 1. Now if I plug in 0 I get 1 over 0 plus 1 which is 1. Boom. Done. See that's pretty pretty simple right? So we're using, we're using algebra to simplify what we have there x minus 2, x squared minus 4, if we plug in 2, we're going to get 0 over 0, so we can factor. We factor this, the bottom is x minus 2, x plus 2, and notice x minus 2, x minus 2 go away. We've got 1 over x plus 2, and when we do that limit, we're going to get 1 fourth. Alright, so what we want to do, we want to make sure that we factor it for any of these. x cubed minus 1, I don't know if you remember how to factor that, that is a difference in cubes. I said I don't know if you did, great. I always have trouble remembering this guy, x squared plus x plus 1 over x minus 1. So notice we get rid of the x minus 1's, this is all we have left. So when we plug in 1, we're going to have 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. Alright? So we'll come, I'll come right back and we'll do a few more examples. All right, now back, we've got um, 4, 5, and 6 here, so let's do this one here. Now this one, square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1, that's a tricky one. We're actually going to do the uh, factor the denominator like it's a difference of squares. So we're going to get square root of x minus 1 over square root of x minus 1 times square root of x plus 1. So we fold that out, we get x minus 1. Cancel that out, we get 1 over square root of x plus 1, we plug in the 1, we're going to get 1 half. Alright, let's take a look at the next one. Now this one, this one's not really factorable. We're talking about x approaches 2 from the right. So if we're talking about x plus x approaches 2 from the right, let's think about what's going on. We're talking about values that are much, much bigger than 2. I'm sorry, not much, but very, very close to 2 but bigger than 2, like 2.0001, um, zero, 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 all right? So if we're thinking about some, uh, some value like that, if we had something like 2.0001 zero, 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 over 2.0001 zero, 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 minus 2, what's going on there? Well, the bottom is going to get small, very small, 0. 0.0001, zero, zero, It's going to get small, as we get closer to 2, it's going to get smaller, but it's going to remain positive. So this seems to me like it's going to remain positive, meaning it's going to go up. If this is getting smaller, the whole thing is getting bigger, right? The smaller the bottom gets, the bigger the whole thing gets, which means this is approaching positive infinity. Or I can say, does not exist. Either way works, okay? Um, last question here for this one. I've got number six here. I've got a function. I want to know something about its continuity. Remember that a continuous function happens when the function itself and the limit are equal. So here, um, I know that this is continuous when it's not x equals three, and I've got a point here. So it looks like uh, I've got something that's maybe going to have a point. If I found the limit, let me use a different color here. If I found the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, I'll be using this function here, and I can factor. And then I'll have x plus 1. My limit for here is going to be 4, and my limit 
from the right is going to be 5. Since 4 and 5 are not equal, then the limit as x approaches 3 is not equal. So, since the, or it does not exist. Since the limit doesn't exist, I can't possibly have a continuous function at the point x equals 3. So there's no continuity. There's a discontinuity at x equals 3. All right, I got one more, uh, one more problem for you, and then uh, we'll look at the calculator stuff, okay? All right, y'all, I got one last problem here uh, before I get to the, how do we do these on the calculator or look at the calculator for limits. Uh, we got this function g of x, 3x squared plus a as x is greater than 2, x minus 3 as x is less than or equal to 2. This is a continuous function. What is the value? Classic, classic uh, calc problem here. So what are we really doing here? We want to make sure that when we plug in 2, we're going to get, when we plug in 2 right here, we're going to get 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. That's f of 2, or g of 2, sorry. That's g of 2. g of 2 is negative 1. I want to make sure that my limit as x, as x approaches, as x approaches 2 of g of x, I want to make sure that that is also equal to negative 1. All right? So um, I know that if I do the limit here, I'm going to get negative 1 anyway, so I don't have to worry about that side. Really what I'm looking at is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And that, I'm going to use this here. And when I plug in 2 in there, I'm going to go and plug in 2, I'm going to get 2 squared is 4 times 3 is um, 12 plus a. And I'm going to set that equal to negative 1 to make sure that all those things are equal. Subtract 12, and I'm going to get negative 13. And I get a value of negative 13 for a. Okay? That's simple. All right, now we'll take a look at how do we do limits on the calculator. See ya. All right, lastly, let's say we want to uh, find the uh, limit in a calculator. So I got some examples um, there with x cubed on, on the paper if you are following along with if this is a, uh, if you're in my class. Um, but if we want to find the limit using a calculator, now I'm using a TI Inspire CAS. Now with a CAS, there's a really fast way to do it, but um, if you don't have a CAS, then this is pretty much all you can do is look at the graph. So all we would do is we would, um, if we can't plug it in, right, and in this case, we're just, you know, plug it in, you're not going to be able to do it. So we're going to go and look at the graph, and we're going to go ahead and plug in our function. So we're going to put in our function here. So uh, here is our fraction, and then we're just going to go ahead and put in x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 2. And then we'll do the same and put the bottom in. After we put that in, we'll go ahead and graph it. So hit enter, and we've got our graph. So now uh, we're just going to take a look at what we're trying to find here. And um, we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 1. So notice here the limit as x approaches 1. As I approach 1, I'm going to go to positive infinity. As I approach 1 from the right, I'm going to go to negative infinity. So since those aren't the same, we're going to say that that does not exist. All right. So what if we have the same thing and we want to find the limit as x approaches 2? Well, here's 2, right? And we definitely have a value there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to open up a new page, a calculator, and we're simply going to put F1 parentheses 2 because it already knows what the first function is. And then it's going to say undefined. So apparently, right here at 2, we probably have a hole in the graph. That's why well, we really can't see it because if we zoom in, we could probably we might be able to see it. But there's probably a hole in the graph. Now, just to make sure everyone knows that I'm not cheating them out, if I put f1 of 3, I'm going to get a value, 5 eighths, which looks about right. So for some reason, there must be something in there that's not working right, and we must have a hole in the graph there that we don't see in our graph. So we get a value that's undefined. So the limit as x approaches 2, um, we we if there's a hole in the graph then we need to know a value really really close so i'm just going to go ahead and do um f1 of 2.9999 and see how close that is and then we'll go up on the top of that so f1 of 3.0001 so we'll come from the left and we'll come from the right and so it looks like um 0.625 is going to be our limit 
All right, I don't think we're gonna be able to get any closer than that. This looks like it's approaching 0.625. This is exactly 0.625, um, but that's probably because my calculator rounded. So that's how we do, um, that's how we do limits in the calculator. If we really wanted and we had a TI Inspire, we can, uh, with a CAS version, if you go to calculus here in your menu, you'll notice here's the limit. And this will let you just, you know, plug straight in as X approaches one of our first function that we had and it'll tell us straight up that's undefined okay so that'll do it that way too all right so that's how you do it in the calculator